to set priorities. We do, but not in many houses. So we can start at the young age to say, friends really mean those that don't ask me to do the wrong things. The church is really a place that we don't question. My father was a teacher and he gave up his work and he worked for the church for the rest of his life. Uh, I went to college and I graduated and I I'm going to go join the military and make some money. I took that test and I called my dad. Hey, Bob, guess what? What? Son? I took the military exam and I passed. I'm going to go make some money, travel the world. Excellent, my son. Can I ask for a favor? Yes. Can you please remove my last name from you? I teach you not to go take life. And you want to train the people to take life? And, oh, you're right. So the church has a fundamental and important role in the upbringing of children. The church, no one questions the church. We go to church, we sit down, the priests, the reverend, the ministers, they said, this is what we're going to do. Yes! Are you going to the government? Sir, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we need to discuss how the economy, I disagree with you. Uh, on the state should take 25% of the, the budget. You know? They argue, 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 everybody go back. I just want to squeeze that guy's step or that woman's step. But in the church, everyone believes that we say what is right, which is right. So I think I'm in the right platform to share what is there for our youth. So you can use this information to better guide your complications. Next slide, please. What are some of the challenges we have? These are not the only challenges, but I thought that this should be some of those that I share with you. So I'll start with our na national office. The youth office has only one person working. How are we going to help? I do the finance, I do the planning, I do the paper rounding, I even go by the politicians. So how am I going to assist all the states, work with all the jurisdictions that do a type of episode? I stand before you to ask for your support to encourage Congressman to increase the funding so we can push those out to the states. The money that they give me to assist the states, your youth, your congregations. So I made about uh, Assistant Secretary, how much do I make? Annually? A little bit more than the money they need you to support the poor state. So then, what I spend most of my time looking for money to support the state. I, I, I think the national leadership look at the needs and say maybe I will have, I'm pretty sure when more resources come along, they will give it to me. I pray every night that it's sooner than later. Employment. Every household in Bone Bay sent their children to go to school. This is a compulsory law. Children between the ages of 6 and 18 must be in school. Otherwise, the parents can be given. Before all these kids go to school, when they finish, they don't have a job. 
So it is really incumbent upon not just the government, about the church, your leadership. To push these people that can make the churches happen. If I'm not mistaken, about 70% of the employment is really generated by both national and state government. If you look around the states, countries that operate, the employment, major part of employment happens in the private sector. Why? We generate what to run the company, the taxes, and so on. We continue to live in this state that we will associate at that time. Or am I getting it out from Uncle Sam and not generating economic development in the private sector? When the time comes that the compact ceases, we do not have money to create jobs because the state of the national government for the state government. We need to start shifting to create employment for our kids when they come back. My daughter applied for Gold Bay State Scholarship and National Scholarship. And there is a point that it says on both scholarships, when you return to your state, you are obligated to work for two years for the government or the state. My daughter is with you since December. She sent out about, I don't know, maybe 17 applications. No one has responded. So maybe we have those things in the place inside, which is good. But then we need to start looking at what about the other ones that really do have their professions are needed but they're not even. So we need to look at the policies that we have for employment, the laws, even the general practices that we have at home. For example, when I first came back and I started working, and I was brought up in the mentality that both my paycheck would put my mom. I get my first paycheck and I brought to my mom. Mom, uh, here's my check. Turn around and say, Me and your dad brought you up in the church, and he says, What you sow is what you reap. That's what we say that somewhere in the Bible. It says that what you plant is what you reap. Receive. And my mother reminded me, I preach the Bible to you, but she used what? You take it, spend it, but spend it once. Now, she didn't say I didn't have to give money back. So I went and I thought, I know what to buy the house, I want So employment, although it sounds like it's a private thing, it's also incumbent upon this leadership here to guide forward. One of the things that I have on my presentation is unhealthy life cycles. I think at the beginning of my discussion I said that there is a crisis in all the countries here in the Pacific. Non-communicable disease. In 2015 they declare non-communicable disease crisis. I may look fit, but this is, is a profound sign of being unhealthy. Are you disabled? No, but I'm wearing glasses. But sometimes we're uncomfortable to say, yes, I'm part of it. I think it should start from 
here. If we can tell our youth, show our youth that unhealthy lifestyle is not good, they will follow. One of the new things for you, I was in the marshes last year. I was traveling and I noticed that there was a new, new thing going on around. They call it eat cigarette. A person has a law that it's illegal to import that. But we find it everywhere. Each cigarette, one puff, just one puff of each cigarette is equivalent to smoking seven six of cigarettes. And you need, you don't need to have a match or a lighter to smoke it. That's why they call it electronic cigarette. It's sucked into this very nice looking thing. Look like a flash drive by this gentleman here. It's two inches. You can put it in your pocket. All in the water, you pick it up. And you're high on nicotine. It's more dangerous than the regular cigarettes that we see. In some of the surveys that I participate in, it also shows the lifestyle that we have also affect our livelihood. For example, the amount of root that we should take, nutrition. Let me start with fruit. In a household where we are supposed to consume one spoon at least one spoon a day of let's just say uh, what's available, sugar cane. You know how many obey this? One out of ten? One out of ten. to what Other issues, I'm not just talking about health, life science. What we feed into our youth's brain is also a challenge. Because the amount of things that we get on the internet are not regulated. from the national government to the municipal government. There were issues in court regarding his girl or his boy showing naked pictures of his boy or his girl. And if I'm not mistaken, if I look around, in one way, somewhere, somehow, we are related. We're not just looking at these things, the youth. They're doing it even worse. Affecting even our traditions. So, I think it's how do you say coast? What's the English word for coast? So, this uh, traditional village group 
And we, two or three years ago, we thought, okay, for traditional day, we will also have our own right before the public traditional, traditional day. And kind of to the simple thing of weaving a basket. So we brought uh, you in our village and say, okay, all of you guys, how many of you can weave the basket to carry bread? We have about, and that goes up in Polonia, we have about close to 100, and now about 100? Less than 10 people can weave basket. How many of these guys can? I don't know if you can see them about that somehow they clean the stone on the rock, or the rock on the stone, and then ding 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 ding. Shokama. How many of you can do this? Not just the young ones, even some of the old ones, including me, when they stand to stop, what the me? And I'm like, Traditions that I'm talking about is not just that. Our lineage is very important. Where do I come from? I cannot speak English if I cannot speak Pompeian. You cannot speak English if you cannot speak Chukis, Pashaya, Marshallese. It comes from within first. Just like we preach in the Bible, it comes, the house of the Lord is here. So are we, whether we are working, practicing traditions, playing, going to school, it all must start from where the house of the Lord is, from within. You are the key to that success, whether it's tradition, education, employment, entertainment, or even talking to each other. You are the key. People sitting right here. Starts from here to out there and back here. That's what I mean by unhealthy lifestyle. We also need non-formal and informal education. What do I mean by that? So, not everyone can go to school and go advance and get a degree. But I don't still submit back home. It's become a formal. But not everyone can be a farmer. But we do have those people, traditional folks, that know the cycles in our farming cycle or system. Right? Even fishermen, you need to know when you get them. Red sabers, what are the loons that they fight? The different types of fish, what are the seasons? How do you even start conservation? Some kids say, wow, MPAs, conservation areas, those are no, they're not blue. We forget that it was here before. You guys in the white uniforms or the neckties came around. We have scientists from way back that knows when to plant yam, when to plant breadfruit. Those are scientists, they just have called scientists. Are we going to have a, a program come and tell me how to plant somehow, when, when and where? I bet you not. The greatest scientists in our communities are our older folks and you know more about our car patches, our oceans and the forests. 
Those are what is called the informal and non-formal education. We need to refine those. As a president alluded to earlier, I'm also a catechist. 